Welcome back to the Tax Equity Modeling course, and in this lesson, we will be reviewing the case study. First, note that we are in January 2016, and what we are doing, we are negotiating with a large utility, and we are negotiating the PPA. We've been instructed to build a financial model, which can come up with a PPA price that will give us an equity return of 8.5%. Note that the project is located in Texas, United States, and therefore, the project is eligible for the tax credits and accelerated depreciation. That means that we will have a partner in this project, which is called a tax equity partner, who will be using the tax credits and accelerated depreciation and, in return, he will be giving the project equity financing. And, on top of the tax equity, we will have a lender who will provide the back leverage loan. So, there will be three financing sources, equity from the sponsor, equity from tax equity partner, and debt from the lender. The financial model has to be capable of sizing the tax equity's investment and construction debt. The construction is planned to start in January 2019. However, using the financial model, we have to evaluate the best year for the project construction start. Next, we are given the terms of the investment of the tax equity partner, and the most important items in the tax equity's terms are the distribution of the cash and allocation of the tax benefits for the wind and solar projects. Note that the model also has to be able to handle the solar project. So, the allocation of the cash and tax benefits vary in different periods, and we've got four periods for the wind project. The first period is the period between the final funding date and the target flip date, and we've got all the definitions in this term sheet. The funding date is the date of the substantial completion of the project and we will assume that the substantial completion happens in the last construction quarter, so the tax equity makes his investment in the last construction quarter. And then we've got the definition of the target IRR and the target flip date. The target IRR is 6.5% for the tax equity partner, and the target flip date is defined as the date when the tax equity reaches its target IRR. However, no later than 10 years from the final funding date. So, in these 10 years, the tax equity gets 20% of cash benefits and 99% of tax benefits including the production tax credits. And the sponsor, who is a Class B member, will be getting the opposite of what tax equity gets. Then, we've got period number two, which happens after the flip date. This is when the tax equity reaches its target IRR. So, after the flip date, there will be a flip of the cash distributions and tax benefits allocations between the parties. So. That is when the second period starts, and in the second period, the tax equity will be getting 5% of the cash and tax benefits, and the sponsor will be getting the opposite, which is 95% of the cash and tax items. Then, we've got period number three. This is when the tax equity does not reach its target IRR in 10 years. Then, in that period, tax equity will be getting 99% of the cash and tax items, and the sponsor will be getting 1% of the cash and tax items. So there will be a cash sweep if the tax equity does not reach his target IRR in 10 years following his investment into the project. And then, we've got period number 4. And this period happens when the tax equity reaches its target IRR in period 3. In this period, tax equity will be getting 5% of the cash and tax benefits, and the sponsor will be getting the opposite. We also got the cash and tax allocations in the solar case. However, it is slightly different because the tax credit for solar is investment tax credit. If you are not familiar with some of the items in this case study, do not worry. We will explore all of the items in detail as we progress through the course. Next, we've got the capital accounts and deficit restoration obligation. And again, don't worry if you are not familiar with these terms. We will introduce them in due course and we will model them in our financial model. And finally, we've got the sponsor's purchase option, and that is the option to purchase the tax equity's interest in the project at the fair market value after tax equity reaches its target IRR. Then we've got the construction debt and bridge loan terms. Note that the borrower of the construction loan is the project company. The maximum leverage we can achieve is 90%. Then we've got different fees and repayment of the construction loan has to be made at the end of the construction period, so it either has to be refinanced with the term loan 
or it can be partially repaid with the proceeds from the tax equities investment. Note that this is called construction debt and a bridge loan. And so, the bridge loan is bridging the funding gap between the start of the construction and the end of the construction when the tax equity makes its investment. Remember that the tax equity invests his money at the end of the construction period. We are assuming that the bridge loan carries the same terms as the construction loan. And then we're given the terms of the term loan. And note here, the borrower is the special purpose limited liability company wholly owned by the sponsor, which owns the equity interest in the project company. So, this structure, when the term loan is given to the holding company, and the holding company invests that money into the project company, is known as a back leverage loan. The back leverage loan is typical in the tax equity structures, and we will see shortly how this type of loans work. So, the term loan will be used to refinance the construction debt, and we are given the term of the loan, which is 15 years. We are given the interest rate of the term loan, and then we're given the debt sizing parameters. So we will have P50 debt service cover ratio and P99 DSCR. The P99 case will impact significantly the loan size, as we shall see later. We've got to build the debt service reserve account, and then we've got these different lockup and default ratios. Next, we're given the assumptions about the project costs, energy generation assumptions, and assumptions about operating costs, fixed asset depreciation, and taxes. And then, we've got the assumptions about the tax credits. Note that the tax credits depend on the year when the project starts construction, and we will see why this is the case later on in the course. So, if we're starting the construction in 2018, then we're eligible for 60% of the full PTC amount, which is 2.5 cents per kilowatt hour. If construction starts in 2019, the PTC will be 40%, and if it is 2020, then PTC is again 60%. The tax credits will have an important effect on project economics. So the year when we start the construction is important for project economics. Next, we are given the instruction on investment return calculations, and we have to carry out a model optimization with respect to the IRR, and with respect to the tax equity transaction structure. We have to run different scenarios with different transaction structures and see how different deal structures affect the return of the parties.